cute there. It's on. <laughs> All right. We're going to leave. Uh-oh. We ain't leaving nobody. We're killing it because the kickstand's still down. <laughs> oh, you, he can edit that out, right? Edit. He won't do it. He's going to leave it in there so he can laugh at me. <laughs> and here we go. Y'all, it's getting dark. Oh, are we missing the sunset? He had to stop and get him a drinky poo. I hope I ain't missing the sunset because he had to stop and get a drink. It was really gorgeous. What's he doing back there lollygagging? I scratched my eye. Hopefully I don't mess up the audio. I always seem to bump a, a cord or something and mess up the audio when I'm closing and opening my helmet. Oh, I hope I don't get bugs on the way home. I was visiting with my cousin, Miss Jayla, and her husband and her baby. And time got away from me. Oh, the sun's gone. It was so pretty. I hope the bugs don't get me now. Dang it. Y'all ever record sunsets? Because if you notice, it's really pretty. And within like 30 minutes, it's gone. I say technically, I guess this is after sunset. But there's still a little daylight out. So I guess if you're... Uh, permitted to only run during daylight hours. It's still a little bit daylight, but after sunset. I don't know why this car got between me and daddy. Here's daddy. That car's turning. You get away car. Daddy's supposed to be on my tail, not nobody else. Dang. Now the dang bugs are going to be drawn to my headlight and I'm going to be cussing all the way Y'all ready to hear me cuss? I probably shouldn't cuss, but you know, I'm probably gonna. Because when bugs hit you, it's like rocks being thrown at you. It hurts. It hurts, hurts, hurts. Is that truck gonna turn? Woohoo, there goes Daddy. That truck ain't turning. I don't know what that truck's doing. They're just hanging out, acting like they ain't got no sense. Hurry up, Jordan. I see you over there. Seven vehicles could have done went. Okay, now the red car is hanging out. There's the B bus. That guy raises, oh, bees, I gotta get out of this track over here. I wish I could turn my light off for a minute, or at least part of it. Dang, bugs are gonna get me. So anyway, we went out to where Grandma lived, Grandma's old house, and we visited, we walked around the pond. I used to feed the fish every night. They built the pond, how old was I? the best 
bestest cat ever. No offense if you had the bestest cat ever, but Crybaby was the bestest cat ever. Crybaby figured out that he could come out to the pond with us every time, he came out with us actually every time we went, but Dad didn't like crappie. I'm not exactly sure why. He didn't even put crappie in the pond. I guess the birds came and pooped out the eggs or whatever. Somehow crappie ended up in the pond. And he didn't like the crappie in the pond. So every time I caught a little crappie, or a big crappie for that matter, out of the pond, Crybaby got him a special treat. And no other cat better come out there and get his crappie because he would take care of him. That was his special treat. And he would keep everybody else away. Let's see, what else was out there? Now, Crybaby was the best cat ever. This is a different story, but the cow murdered Crybaby. Her name was, what was the cow's name? Uh, oh, if I didn't want to tell you the cow, it was Babe. Babe the cow. If Babe the cow murdered Crybaby. I wasn't there for it, but it was very traumatic, and Crybaby was, he was actually like, I think he was 16 or better years old when he actually died. Well, I don't say died. When he was murdered by the cow, he was over 16 years old, and he was an outdoor country farm cat, so Crybaby had a good life, but the cow is a murdering hussy, and we don't like the cow. lead into a cow story. I used to milk the cow with grandma. You would have to give the cow corn or she would get mad. And actually, the cow was probably bittersweet for Crybaby because the cow's teats dried up years before she murdered Crybaby. But when she was still giving milk, Crybaby would also go out to the cow shed with us every morning and every evening twice a day you have to milk those big fat cows and we'd go out there and get a corn bucket or i don't know it wasn't all corn there was like grain and weird smelling stuff in it i don't know what it was something cows like to eat we'd feed her and then me and grandma milk the cow well grandma did most of the milking because i was little but we'd milk the cow and she'd get tickled with herself because crybaby would sit there and all you had to do is give him a couple squirts on his face and that's actually what he wanted. He wanted a couple squirts of milk and he'd clean it off of himself and then he'd wait for you to do it again so he could clean it off and lick himself up and get him some fresh milk. I always thought it was a little weird because I didn't like warm milk, but I guess for a cat, he was probably pretty doggone spoiled. Is that like uh, when your lover murders you, she fed him milk, the, the essence of, of yummy for kitties and then she laid on him and murdered him in, her, in his old age maybe she was insane I don't know but I still am mad at the cow for that babe is dead but I'm still mad at her still mad at her for it oh, I wish that I would have got the sunset for you guys it was a beautiful evening I had fun visiting I said we're on our way back from the farm now there's all sorts of farm stories. Uh, Tessa, my little, what would she be? My second cousin? I don't know, I get so confused by stuff. I'd probably call her my niece, cause she's, she's a baby, but I think she's probably my second cousin. She was out there gathering walnuts from the walnut tree, and she just thought they were the best things ever, cause they don't have, oh, the moon's out. They don't have walnuts in their yard, so she was literally gathering buckets of them. They said they was gonna have to plant a walnut tree when they went home. We also gathered walnuts when we were little. We would put them in five gallon buckets and Grandpa would take them over to the driveway and then dump them out in the driveway. We'd run over them all for a couple months and it would get the, the green and the black outer shell all off of it. And then we would gather them up and take them in the house and Grandma would crack them out of the shell and get the nuts out. That was nice. There was also a cow feed tree by the chicken coop. And we would gather the cow feed worms. How do you say it? Taffy, pataffy, cataffy. I've heard it said so many ways. I don't know. But if you have seen a pataffy tree, you know what I'm talking about. 
we would gather the worms off of them and go fishing with them. Those, they're nasty and they spit on you because they're a little, um, not very friendly. And they probably don't want to die because they, chickens absolutely love them. And so do the fish. So, like I said, I don't know what's so spectacular about them. But if you want to bait anything, chicken, guineas, fish, get you some pataffa worms or pataffa or pataffa or whatever you call it. Worms and uh, there's your superfood there. Oh my goodness, y'all. Grandma dug up a root at the well one day and she, I don't know what she thought it was. I think she thought it was Jerusalem artichokes and she informed everybody that she was making something or another with them. Thank goodness she was the only one that ate them. Grandma ended up at the emergency room getting her stomach pumped because she done poisoned herself. She survived. This is also the same grandma that ran herself over with her own car at the local post office. Oh, that's another story too, isn't it? Anyway, I got totally lost on grandma there. What was I talking about? Pataffy worms? The post office. It wasn't the post office. Uh-oh. Should I continue? Should that be a to be continued somewhere down the line story? How Grandma ran herself over at the post office? Oh, I was talking about her digging up the Jerusalem artichokes. But they weren't Jerusalem artichokes. She poisoned herself. We did, however, drink sassafras tea all the time. Now, as far as I know, she never poisoned us with sassafras tea. But I... Still, she poisoned herself with Jerusalem artichoke roots when I was like a younger child, right? So I'm not for sure why anyone trusted her to make sassafras tea and give it to all of us, but they did. Like, oh yeah, Grandma tried to kill herself. She would never kill us though, right? Go car, go. Gotta pay attention for a minute. See that black car? It's a popo. It's a popo. Anyway, so she did make sassafras tea, and we would drink it. She picked asparagus, which asparagus is pretty self-explanatory. Um, now, as an adult, I have thought about this. So we would eat, go mushroom hunting. And if you're from the rural areas, you, I'm sure you probably know what morels are. So morels are like the biggest, best ever. But there's like yellows, there's blacks, there's peckerheads, there's whites, there's... You know, it's basically just like different mushroom names, but they all come up in the spring. And then you go find all the mushrooms. You put them in a little bit of salt water because they're full of bugs. There's somebody standing up here on the side of the road. Put them in a little bit of salt water. Get the bugs out. Salt them up. And they are yummy, yum. oh, then you put up some flour, dip them in some egg and flour, and they're yummy good, right? Well, Grandpa, according to Grandma, he could only ever eat like one or two mushrooms because he had no, because according to Grandma, he had an allergic reaction to them. And he, I, did he have to, I think he had to go to the hospital because his allergic reaction was so severe. Now, I can't verify that and neither one of them are here to verify it so it's my story I can tell it how I want but as an adult being told this story as a child I wonder maybe if grandma picked some sort of other mushroom and poisoned him I'm pretty sure there was a hospital involved in that one because I don't think he would have not been able to eat them anymore because it was such a severe action with reaction without the hospital being involved. So I'm pretty sure the hospital was involved. But like I said, as an adult, I really wonder if she didn't just pick some mushroom and say, Oh look, this is a hen of the woods. I'm going to feed it to dad. He will be so impressed with my Jerusalem artichokes and my hen of the woods mushrooms. Yeah. And then the poor man ends up in the hospital. Well, afterwards, you think she'd confess if she actually poisoned him with a mushroom? Or you think she'd just snicker? She would snicker. You don't know Grandma, but she would snicker. My murder tendencies, they come from Grandma. She would snicker and then say, Holy, better not do that again. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's what would happen. So, my murder tendencies. Let me tell you about the first time that I was so disappointed I wouldn't ki that I could not kill something. So, Grandma, Chris tells me that I'm Grandma, and I tell him that he's my Grandpa, because he says that he can see a lot of her mannerisms and attitudes and stuff with me. Chris will give Little Dog uh, mouth to mouth when he died, like what, last year? And Grandpa would do the same thing to his dogs. So, he is Grandpa. But anyway, where was I going with this? Oh, murder. Murder, that's where we're going. Sorry, guys. I get so distracted. You have to, you have to excuse me. So, all that to say, Grandma and Grandpa were those people that took in whatever animal other people didn't want. So, we had a cat named Fluffy. Fluffy's name should have been Bastard or a plethora of other um, not so pleasant names. Fluffy would hiss at you if you looked at him. He would hiss at you if you walked by him. He would hiss at you for walking. It didn't matter. It, he would hiss at you for being alive. And he would also bite you. So randomly, oh, I'm going to slow down. I'm getting bugs. So randomly, as you're walking through the house, minding your business, you would always have to be prepared to be attacked by a cat for at any moment in time. So they also ended up with like old rickety horses and dogs and anything you can possibly imagine. Oh my God, her one of her best friends had a parrot, right? This parrot, they always told me, don't mess with the parrot, Tammy. Stay away from the parrot. And I'm like, okay, you ain't gotta tell me twice. They said that parrot will bite your finger off. Because apparently it bit someone else's finger off. That's how grandma's best friend ended up with it. And every time I went over there, she had to put the cover on it, on the cage, because it would cuss like a sailor, because you can't have precious little me hearing foul language. And anytime you talk, or anytime, not you talk, sorry, anytime you would call her, because back in the day you just had landline phones, so anytime you would call her, that damn parent would say, help, help, they kidnapped me, help, they, they're holding me hostage, help, and scream for help. So, like, Grandma knew that it was a parent, but I could imagine if, like, you got telemarketers or anybody else, what they were thinking of this talking parent. Like, see that? I'm totally off topic. Totally off topic. We're not talking about the talking parent right now. We are talking about my murder tendencies. So, Grandma and Grandpa, Mr. Oh, no, and Mrs. Oh, we can't kill nothing because they're just innocent little animals. Got a fighting rooster from somebody because, of course, they were going to kill it because the fighting rooster's name should have had sucker after the first name of the rooster. You know what I'm talking You know what I'm talking about. So, as children, none of us like this rooster. So one day, I'm out doing my little kid business because that's what little kids do and I had very serious business to tend to outside as a little kid. And if they had done let all the chickens out of the chicken coop, right? So I'm outside minding my business and all of a sudden out of nowhere, this rooster takes, you kind of can't see, this, takes his front, his wings and they spread the damn wings all the way out they fly, but then they take their little rooster feet with their rooster claws and dew claws and whatever fighting claws they have, which when you're like seven years old look very big and traumatic and scary, and starts chasing me. So, since he's chasing me, I start running. Well, I'm running and screaming like a freaking maniac. Now, mind you, we're in the middle of the country, so no neighbors were there to record or hear it, thank goodness. I'm screaming like a maniac. And all of a sudden, from the other side of the house, Grandpa appears with a leaf rake. Grandma did not help. Grandpa was my hero. Thank you, Grandpa. Grandpa appears from the side of the house with a leaf rake. So I am in the front yard, running around circles in the three giant trees that we used to have used as bases for playing t-ball, running in circles, screaming and hollering with a giant rooster chasing me. Grandpa is behind the roosters, the, the rooster, 
yelling, smacking it with a leaf rake, trying to get it to quit chasing me, as feathers, ouch, are literally flying everywhere. Today, that would have been like the viral YouTube video, or it would have been the video used to put us in an asylum. Whichever, it would have been one of them. But after that, I was so upset because, you know, this rooster was trying to murder me. You didn't see how big its claws, you didn't see how big its claws were and how big it gets when it floofs up its wings. It was very scary. So I'm all uh, crying and, and, and upset. And, and we go in the house and I'm supposed to talk to grandma because she's going to calm me down. Well, let me tell you, grandma didn't calm me down. Grandma instead said, oh, honey, that big bad rooster scared you. And well, yes, he did. And, and, you know, she hugged on me and did some of that grandma stuff. Then she said, do you want to kill it? I said, yes. I'm seven. Don't tell me I can kill stuff and then try to take it back. She said, what do you mean you want to kill it? I said, let's kill it. She said, you want to get the gun and shoot it? Because by the time you're seven, where I'm from, you've shot a gun. I said, yes, let's kill it. And the tears stopped. As soon as I had the opportunity to shoot that rooster, the tears were over and death was imminent. I'm happy now. We're going to go shoot that rooster. We're going to, Grandma made some good chicken and dumplings. And she gonna boil that thing in the stock pot tonight? And we gonna have some chicken and dumplings tomorrow? And those would have been the absolute best chicken and dumplings I would have ever ate in my life ever to this day, Grandma. But instead, Grandma says, Tammy, are you sure you wanna kill that rooster? So yeah, I wanna kill it. It tried to kill me. It's called survival of the fittest. I mean, I'm sure I didn't say that at the time because that's more, you know, later in life term, maybe. But yeah, I want to kill the rooster. She told me I could get a gun and I could shoot the rooster. I'm all for getting a gun and shooting the rooster. Then she would just, Tammy, it's just a little bitty animal. It don't know no better. Well, it will know better when it dies. She said, you don't really want to kill it, do you? Yes, I do. So she spent the next... I don't know. She spent the next probably 20 to 30 minutes explaining to me the reasons why we should not kill this poor innocent rooster. Now mind you, I spent the next 20 to 30 minutes telling her that the rooster was not poor, the rooster was not innocent, the rooster was a ruthless killer, and should in fact be killed. But that was my, my first brush with the opportunity, well it wasn't an opportunity, it was a teaser at killing something. Grandma could have introduced me to my killing lifestyle. She may have. You see that sky up there? Isn't that beautiful? Okay, the bugs are getting bad. Well, guys, I'm going to talk to you later. Oh, gosh.